The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. You get an opportunity to join us in partnership. You can now give on our new secure website, rogministries.org. So just go there, the donate button is right on the home page, or you can give by PayPal. And as always, you can give uh, through the, you know, your credit, your debit card, but as always, you can give through the cash app, Reality of the Gospel One. So I want you to make plans now to partner with us and uh, help us to reach out and touch the lives of people. This year, we've been able to provide three cleft palettes for children that couldn't smile. We're able to put, amen, uh, several hundred pairs of shoes on children's feet in Africa. And then through our partnership with Commission Field, we were able to establish and help to establish a storm shelter there, uh, an air raid shelter in Israel, and feed the hungry people in India. So we want to encourage you to partner with us, to aid us, and to assist us through our partnership with Agape Samaritan. Amen. We've sent backpacks and school supplies and clothes to children in Ghana, and they're being blessed. The reports are coming back. They're very thankful for what we do, so we can do more together. So we're asking you to pray about joining us with partnership at whatever level you can sustain your giving. I ask those of you that will to sow a $41 a month seed to aid and assist us and watch God move on your behalf. So I want you to think about it, amen, and the address is on the screen if you need to just mail a check or a money order. That's P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. All your donations are tax deductible. That's why we took the time to secure the 501c3. And now that we have the secure website, you can give right on the website and believe God for your return. And we will begin to reciprocate that. We have a partner package we'll send you once you notify us of your partnership. And every month we'll communicate you with you with a CD or DVD that can continue to enhance your learning experience. So make plans to partner with us. Also, I want to give you an opportunity to visit our website. Go to the bookstore. Go there and shop. My new book, uh, Rediscover the Art of Prayer and Fasting, is available online. I mean, you can get it from Amazon or you can order it from us. But you need to get that book in your hands and begin to read it. It will change the, your focus and your perspective and bring you to a place where you can strengthen your dedication, strengthen your consecration with God. Because I'm telling you, in the hour that we're living in, you cannot afford to live lack and slack. you got to tighten it up. you got to press toward the mark for the pride of the high calling of God. And I believe God will make a difference in your life. We'll take you now into a service already in process where God is moving. And the power of God is going to be available to you right there where you are. Facebook, video, television, it doesn't matter. The power of God is going to meet you where you are. God. Because this is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I cannot be defeated. And I will not quit. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Therefore, I know when I have the word of God on my situation, I have God on my situation. Therefore, my situation must change in Jesus' name. From 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter 5 verse 6, the Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, on last evening, last month when we were together, I talked about the mighty hand of God. 
So tonight, in session two, I want to talk about living life under the mighty hand of God. Living life submitted to the mighty hand of God. Living life yielded to the mighty hand of God. Mighty uh, is, means powerful. It talks about might, mightily, mightier, strong, and strength. But the last part of the definition I really like for mighty, it was relative and manifested power. How many know we need the power of God relative to our life situation, relative to what we're dealing with, and also we need it manifest. I don't just want you to tell me about some, you know, some um, uh, kinetic energy and potential energy. I want to get kinetic. I want to get activated. I want to see it moving in my life. They were singing it, it. It holds me up. So the mighty hand, hand. Now, since we read that out of First Peter, here, uh, sheer, C H E I R, is the Greek word for hand, and it talks about the hand. It's used in, in its various ways that it's used. Beside the ordinary significance of hand, it's the idiomatic. Remember, Miss Kathy wrote a book on uh, the idioms, the Hebrew idioms that they use. And so, the idiomatic phrases by the hand of God or at the hand. Of God, but it signifies the agency of God, and it talks about the power of God. So we want to look at living life submitted to the power of God, submitted to the ability of God. So we see the hand of God. Look at Hebrews one and ten. We see the hand of God in creation. Now we know when we read the book of Genesis, then God said and God saw. But the Hebrew writer said it like this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. He said, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. Notice this, and the heavens. One earth, but three heavens, several heavens, plural on heavens. He said, they are the works of thine hand. So we see, we call it the handiwork of God, but we see now that our life got started by the hand of God. The very earth we live on, the foundation of it was laid by the very hand of God. The heaven that we're headed to, amen, the hand of God did it. The heaven we behold, the stellar heaven, when we look up and behold the stars, that's the hand of God. I'm just trying to show you God. Let's go on to Exodus the, chapter 3. And I want you to begin to understand that the hand Hand of God is available. Now you got to understand, a friend of mine, one of my spiritual sons, has been prophesying uh, about the gloom, the doom, the detriment, amen, the havoc that's coming. But I came to tell you, in the midst of it all, the good hand of God is going to rest upon a remnant. There's always going to be a people that's going to consecrate this. I know we, I know we see degradation everywhere. We see devastation everywhere. But when God sees dedication and consecration, He's going to bring manifestation. That's going to be a people kept by the power of God through faith until salvation. So I want you to know that the mighty hand of God is the place to place yourself. Did you hear what I said? You didn't know we used to sing a song, lay your hands on me, Jesus, I don't mind. But I want you to know I'm talking about putting yourself under his hand. Come on here. And humbling yourself under his mighty hand. Watch this now. The Hebrew word for hand, we're in, we're in Exodus um, uh, 319. In Exodus 319, the Bible says, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by a mighty hand. And I told you in the first session that that means except by a mighty hand. In other words, I'm bad. I'm Pharaoh. Who are you talking to? You going to tell me something? God said, he ain't going to let you go till he feel the might of my hand. He ain't going to lose you till he feel the power of my hand. As long as you're just talking in the flesh, the devil ain't backing up when he feel the strength of the hand of God that's upon your life. Come on, that monkey gonna have to back up. I came to tell you, he gonna back up. He gonna be, he gonna be backpedaling like Muhammad Ali doing the moonwalk like Michael Jackson. He gonna be getting up out your way. I came to tell you the power of God is gonna sustain your life. The word hand in the Hebrew is yud. Yud is a, from a root word. That, and here's what I like about it. It indicates an open hand. How I many know an open hand is a giving hand? An open hand is a providing hand. Now, a closed hand is a fighting hand. Come on here. But you know, you can fight with an open hand. Some folks will slap the fire to you. Come on, they ain't even got the punch to you. So I came to tell you, whether well, God's hand is open or closed, it's going to take care of you. Come on here. It'll provide for you and slap your adversary. I feel like preaching to myself. Mm -hmm. Indicating power. 
power means direction, means includes substance. It talks about wealth and might. So I'm trying to tell you that whether you Hebrew, Greek, Latin, Chaldean, it does not matter. When the hand of God shows up, the power of God shows up. When the hand of God shows up, the guidance. How I many know oh, you can guide and direct? Policemen direct traffic with their hand. It said right here, hand yard means direction. God will lead and guide you. How I many know we're in a time now when we need divine guidance? Go to Deuteronomy 6. I'm just trying to move through this foundation because I feel like, hey amen, that the power of God is going to touch your life tonight. Hallelujah. Listen here. Glory be to God. This ain't the time to run around through the house and play with the grandkids. It's the time to set yourself down and come out here. Go and drink that iced tea. Get it out the way. Deuteronomy 6 and 21. Ah, this train is coming down the track now. Thou shalt say unto thy son, we were, not we are, we used to be. Come on here. We were Pharaoh's bondmen. We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. And the Lord, notice all, you see all capital letters there. That's yod hey bav That's Jehovah himself. Bought us out of Egypt. How he bring us out? With a what? A mighty hand, a strong hand, a powerful hand, a hand of provision, a hand of deliverance. So tonight, I want to focus your attention on the fact that the hand of God will divinely intervene when you're dealing with an enemy. Some of y'all got enemies that feel like they just ain't going to dissipate. They feel like they're not backing up. Look like you rebuke the devil and he don't buke. Come on here. You bind the devil and he's still loose. You cast him out only to find out he's still standing in your face. Oh, but I came to tell you tonight, when the power of God get up on you, it's going to back that monkey up. Then, then, then also I want you to see that the hand of God will divinely intervene to produce assistance to fulfill a God-given task or assignment. My wife was talking about the appreciation for the people that God hand move on to aid and assist you. How I many know we need Aaron's and hers to hold our hands up? And when Aaron and her hold up our hands, amen, deliverance take place in the valley. So everybody wins. You know, I always I say we always win. But I want you to know when I say we always win, I mean, that just don't mean me and Chuck and Nisha and Sister Jesse. That means all of us. We all win. Come on here. Why? Because we in it to win it and we in it together. I mean, no, I don't care if you didn't get off the bench. If the team won, you got a ring too. Come on now. I came to tell you we in a time now when we got to realize, yes ma'am, teamwork makes the dream work. I just want to make sure you're on the right team. That makes a difference. Look at Psalm 105. Psalm 105. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of flowing in this. You know, God been stirring my heart for the last three years. He said, son, Psalm 105, 15 is yours. But I want you to back up and look at it from verse 13. He said, I've given it to you. And I want you to wrap your mind around it. I know how it reads. It reads for Israel's sake. But I want you to begin to wrap your mind around it for yourself. He said, because you walked in it when you didn't even realize it. Watch me going to read it because he took me all the way back to 1983 and the first time it, it manifested where I could see it. Psalm 105, 13 says, when they went from one nation to another. You can make it a literal nation, a nationality, however you want to look at it. And from one kingdom to another people, he, God, suffered no man to do them wrong. God allowed no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings. Come on here. We can say prime ministers. We can say tribal chiefs. Come on here. We can say governors, governments, presidents. He what? He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Don't touch my anointed ones. How many know that we are born of the Spirit of God and we have an anointing that abides on the inside of us? So I came to tell you that that includes you too. Don't just look at that prophet's part. God said, don't even touch my anointed ones. Do you know? I remember 1983, I was preaching in revival. I went full time in 82. Nobody really knew my name. And then all of a sudden, somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody had their pastor to call me for a revival. And I went down there and I took the Sons of Thunder with me and we had 
had Sister Rita singing with us, and we had an agreement. And but God started moving, and the money got so big. We had, the agreement was the first three nights, everything went to the church. The last three, everything went to ROG Ministries. Well, the money got so big by Wednesday night, they reneged. You ain't walking up out of here. We ain't giving you all this kind of money. So I said, this revival is over. God said, don't do it. I'm sitting walk out there. I'm headed out to pastor study. I'm like, I'm going to go tell these folks, y'all. God said, don't do it. I've been trying to get in this church for seven years. He said, you got me in here. Let me stay. I'll take care of you later. So I turn around and I told him, I said, forget the money. I'm going to preach. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. I preached mad that night for about 45 minutes. I, I was hotter than a chili pepper. You know, they, they didn't know the difference because I was already knowing it loud and didn't, didn't smile no way. So they just, they, I was mad as I could be. And I want you to know that very night when I got over myself, amen, God God delivered a homosexual man. I'm talking about they were sitting back there wrapped up like boyfriend, girlfriend. But God sees that when I when I finally calmed down, he said, I teach for 10 minutes on the spirit of perversion. I said, I don't know nothing about no spirit of perversion. He said, I do. And he began to teach through me for 10 minutes when I gave the appeal. The man came down and I promise y'all he was switching like Miss America. He come walking down there. He was proud gay. And I want you to know boss was first soprano high. But God told me to lead him through the sinner's prayer. And when I led him through the sinner's prayer. I intended to lay my hands on him. God said, don't lay your hands on him. I wore a silk mantle under my robe. I reached inside my robe and pulled the mantle out, laid it around his neck. And I said, say, Father, he didn't get it out of his mouth. The power of God hit him. He fell out shaking, belly vibrating like a belly dancer. These seven spirits came out of him. He got up, hallelujah, walked like a young man going back to his seat crying and weeping. He asked the other guy that was with him, was he going to go with him. He said, no, and walked out the door. I want you to know the next night I was preaching and this gentleman came in, amen, with a two-piece suit and a bow tie. I ain't recognize him. He walked like a young soldier. Sat on the right behind the deacons and I was preaching that night. Get that junk out the church and let's praise God. And I want you to know the power of God fell and that man stood up and said, preach, man, preach the word. Everybody turned around like, my God, he sounded like a girl last night. Where that voice come from? God put thunder in his voice. The one night of deliverance and I came to tell you, the woman came in. I probably had a word of knowledge, and I said, you got tumors in your body. God's going to heal you. I see you're scheduled for an operation. God said, refuse to have it and make the doctors examine you again. And she went in, and she was so adamant. They didn't want to do it because they had to run some doc through her body, and they weren't going to be able to operate. But then when she told him, I was at church last night, and the man of God said, don't get cut. I must have an x-ray. They told oh, you we want them really religious folk. He took her back there to show her how dumb that was. And when they x-rayed her, they was mesmerized bug eye. They said, oh, my, oh, 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 we need you to stay here. We got to call somebody. They called a specialist. He said, it'll take me two hours to get there. They said, well, we're going to wait. They kept her in the room for two hours. He came in. They showed him her x-ray from three months ago and the x-ray from that morning. He said, I see the nine tumors over here. So who x-ray is this? He said, look at the name. She said, so, so somebody got the same name? They said, no, it's the same woman. He said, I need to x-ray her myself. Went back there and get a second x-ray. I x-rayed her. He came out so clean. He said, y'all sure y'all got the right x-ray? He said, now these two look alike. They said, we sure this was her. She was scheduled today for an operation. But God, and I want you to know, she came back to church. She bought 75 people on the strength of her testimony. Amen. That place flew up. We had 75 folks saved. And when the revival ended, they gave me $300. Gave James and John, the son of thunder, 25 apiece. And said, we ain't paying that girl. That's Watch this. That's interpreting that gibberish you speak in. We ain't giving her nothing. I said, that's all right. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm God done got me now. I'm relaxed. I get up in my mind, in my mind. I'm going to say Jesus to pull you through if you can stand the pool. Look at somebody and tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. In my mind. So when they got ready to turn it over to me, I walked to the pool pit, took the microphone and said, if I be a man of God, in 365 days, this pool pit will be vacant. The man literally laughed in my face when I handed him the mic back. The deacons called me 364 days later and said, man of God, we want you to know we voted him out yesterday. I came to tell you he touched God's anointed and it cost him a year later. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I didn't rebuke him. I didn't bind him. I just spoke what thus say of the Lord and God shut it down. And he ain't been able to pass that was 1983. He ain't been able to pastor a church nowhere since. What happened? He touched
watched God's anointed. And God said, I told you, don't do that. First Kings, come on here, chapter 13. I'm trying to tell you there is divine protection built into righteousness. Built into living holy. Built into living clean. I came to tell you, glory be to God, that the power of God is about to break loose on your behalf. Mm, give me a little bass in my mic and just a little more volume. I'm ready to go now. I just got clear for the takeoff. First Kings 13 and 1. The Bible says, and behold, there came a man of what? A man of God. God out of Judah. That's the tribe that ain't just praise. That's out the tribe of Judah. And the word of the Lord unto Bethel. You know, Bethel was a place. Bethel also means house of God. And I believe we need a man of God to come in the house of God in this hour with a word from God. Now watch this, watch this. This is peculiar here. And Jeroboam, if you don't know that he's the king, stood by the altar to burn incense. Now David and Jesus, amen, were the, who brought in the king priest uh, revelation. But this, you know, when Saul tried it, he calls to him. So now Jeroboam is trying to do something he ain't fitted to do. He's at the altar too. It is for the purpose of burning incense. That's the priest's job, not the king's job. But God sent a man of God. And the prophet cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said oh altar altar thus saith the Lord behold a child shall be born unto the house of David Josiah by name and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burned upon thee never before done in Israel and he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. You got to understand this. Normally, a king gives an order, and somebody else go going to execute it. But he is so adamantly upset with this man of God who's prophesying to the altar that he was about to burn incense on that the king put his own hand on the man of God while he gave the command and listen here when you read this you don't see one court just a moving you don't want to see one MOD moving minister of defense you see nobody move as soon as he touched the anointed the man of God don't rebuke him the Bible said when he touched the man of God Instantly his hand withered up. God reproved kings for your sake, saying, What? Touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. It came to pass when he cried out against the altar of the king, which put forth his hand, his hand dried up. That means the nerves now will not respond to the command of the brain. The brain is saying stretch out and grab him, but the nerves are shut down and the hand can't move. The muscles are paralyzed. Not only can he not stretch it any further, he can't even draw it back. Booger just stuck. Come on here. Oh, don't you understand? That was a woman of God married to a man that they were saved. You know, how they, you, they, were, they were sinners, but then she got saved. Well, he wasn't about to get saved. He was just a heathen. And every time she would go to church, Church, she'd get a beat down. Hallelujah. So one day she came to pastor. She said, Pastor, every time I come to church, I got to go home and get a whooping. It's going to be a fight on in the house. And she said, I'm tired of being beat down. Pastor said, me too. Let's pray. He prayed over her and he made a declaration. If he ever touch you again, he going to have to deal with God. And I want you to know she went home that night. Hallelujah. And got in the bed before he got there. And all of a sudden, over at like 2 o'clock in the morning. He woke her up and she just drew up. She knew I'm about to get a beat down. He woke her up crying and apologizing. And she said, I didn't know how to take it. I didn't know what was going on at first. And he said, please forgive me. I will never touch you again. Hallelujah. Got on his knees and said, can you tell me how to get saved? Come on here. Watch this. Watch this. Booger got saved, gave his life to God and, and then when everything mellowed down, she said, uh, can I ask you what happened? He said, I had a dream. She said, God came to me. I saw 
saw God in my dream. And God told me if I ever touch you again, he was going to put me in hell. And he showed me hell. And I can't, God, I want to go in that place. Whatever it takes to stay out of there. So he was, he was apologizing. What happened? He touched God's anointed. Oh, ain't you glad God got him and she didn't have to shoot him and go to jail? Come on. I came to tell you, when you walk with God in this hour, I dare you to consecrate yourself. I dare you to dedicate yourself. Stop looking at the degradation. Stop looking at the devastation. Press into your personal dedication and watch God give manifestation. We just saw the definition of the manifested revelant power of God. And I stopped by the Little Rock, Arkansas on my way to heaven to tell you here tonight, if you live life under the mighty hand of God, God's about to exalt you. God's about to raise you up. Ah, Shabbat. God, hallelujah. And the Bible said he could not pull it again to himself. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out. That's the word he just prophesied. According to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. Ain't that a switch? My sister Barnes said, God gonna flip the strip. Well, you was just giving orders. You was just about to have somebody to come get a hold to me. You was upset because I prophesied against the altar and now all of a sudden you didn't have a mind change. Can I tell you Now I know we've heard about this time tomorrow but anybody ready for a suddenly? Anybody ready for a right now move? A right now visitation? Not one day after a while by and by but God today. God moving now. I came to tell you we're in a season now. If you will dedicate yourself if you will consecrate yourself if you make a decision to walk in the fear of God, make a yes, Lord, be the anthem of your life. Whatever God says to me, my answer is yes, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to trust you to get it done. Jesus. And my Bible tells me, the king answered and said unto the man of God, entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me. Oh, you want me to pray for you now? That my hand may be restored. Oh, it's something in it for him. Have you ever understood that some folk been hating on you? That some folk been criticizing you? Bad mouthing you? Bad biting you? They're about to come to you and say, please pray for me. The folk who used to slap your hand. Now they're going to say, lay your hand on me. Ah, yes it is. We in a time now where you got to live under the mighty hand of God. Because God will speak to you when you least expect him to. You just going to Kroger's. You just going to buy some cookies. Come on here. And then God told you that cashier got a vertebrae in her back that's messed up. I need you to straighten it out. Oh, well, Lord, you know, anybody asking me for prayer? Wait, 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 wait. Are you in church? We ain't asking you for prayer. Here you go. You sister over there with the blue blanket. God done gave me. She ain't got you to call her out. Oh, but when you're in the store, well, Lord, you know what I'm saying? I ain't nobody asking me for prayer. Okay, you just walk up to her and say, listen, the Lord told me that one of your vertebrae is messed up and you in pain. Is, is, am I hearing him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just sorry. Well, God told me to tell you that you healed. Reach back there and touch it now. What did you just do to me? I ain't did nothing to you. God did it. I'm trying, no, no, no. See, I, see. Now, when it's that simple, you might get away with it. But when he tell you, I need you to lay your hand. Oh Lord, this a stranger. I don't know this lady. I can't be walking up in Kroger's land. They don't allow laying on the hands in Kroger's. Come on here. Now the folk in Kroger's that's fighting, they don't feel like that. I'm trying to tell you, when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, if God speak to you, that the cashier, Amen. Right? You trying to buy some stamped at the post office. Oh, no, wait a minute, brother. Boy, that's federal government. I can't be up in there. Oh, you can't obey God up in the federal government office, huh? You can't obey. I thought you was going to live like under. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, when you, when you just let it be church, oh, I, I, whew, I obey him in church to midnight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I ain't got to say no more. You got it. I, I feel you. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored again and became as it was before. Let's go to Acts 13 because I want I'm talking about God's hand. A man will show up in the midst of your enemies when your enemies is trying to mess with you. God will show you that my hand is upon you because God said touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Now don't misunderstand me. You got a legal right according to the constitution of these United States 
to bear arms to protect your family. But what about when you wake up and they already in your bedroom? They already up on you. What you gonna do then? You that thing is in the other room, or you got that thing under the mattress. Even if it's under the pillow, you can't get your hand there. Oh, but you can open your mouth and find the devil. Come on here. Y'all remember back when we first got saved and, and you got into a real church? Looked like something tried to smother you every night. You be in bed, you couldn't scream, you couldn't kick, you couldn't holler. And you're like you just about to die and what even no pillow on your face. You grasping for your last breath. You couldn't raise your voice. But some way, somehow, you just knew to whisper, Jesus. When you just whisper, Jesus, that thing let you go. You sat up, broke out in the cold sweat, looking around. Ain't nobody in the room. But you found out whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I came to tell you tonight that the good hand of God is ready to work for somebody that's ready to put it to work. I'm thinking about a woman there in Minnesota in Mark Barkley's ministry. He taught a 13-week series on the name of Jesus. She bought it back in the 80s. She bought every cassette and kept listening to it. One morning, there was a beautiful forecast, so she stayed upstairs and she had the back and the doors open. Went to bed with a praise on her lips and Jesus teaching on the tape. She woke up and saw a silhouette of a man coming up the fire escape. He stepped on the balcony. She slid up in the bed. Just as he went to come through the curtain, she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, get out of here. He turned and went to running. She dialed 911. Just happened to be officers patrolling her. So when he went down the, the, the thing and they, the call came, they pulled up and the way they found him, Brother James, they followed a trail of clothes. They followed his socks. They found his pants, his T-shirt, his shirt, everything but his BBDs. And hallelujah. And they went to the bush because the bush was shaking. He was sitting there in the bush shaking. And when the officer pulled the bush back and said, come out of there, he looked at the officer. I'm coming out with make him leave me alone. So it was two officers. He said, he ain't bothering you. I ain't talking about him. That big nine foot ball head man. Make him leave me alone. He said, ain't no nine foot ball head man. You don't see him. He's standing right there. It was an angel of the Lord. that come on that fire escape. Hallelujah. And manifested itself. The hand of the Lord. His provisions. He's the Lord of hosts. The heavenly host of angels are at your behest. When you call on the name of Jesus, angels gonna back it up. Jesus said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I came to tell you tonight, it's time to live life under the mighty hand of God. We ain't serving Pee Wee Herman. This God that I serve don't even look like Steve Urkel. You got to understand here, you will never hear my God go, did I do that? Come on here. God gonna be saying like he said to Abraham, is anything too hard for me? What you got? Bring it, Abe. Y'all should be in Acts 13 by now. We're going to go straight to verse 6. This man of God just got a fresh anointing, just stepped into his apostolic office. And the Bible says in verse 6, when they had gone through the aisles under Paphos, they found certain sorcerers, a false prophet of Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country. Look at him, evil man in high places. See, we got demons influencing significant leadership. That's why the Bible told us to pray for those that are in leadership. But I believe God's about to turn it like it was in the days of old. The king's going to begin to look for the prophets. The legislators going to begin to look to the prophetic voice. The governor's going to begin to partner with the prophets. Hallelujah. So the devil got there first and the devil been manipulating. But the man of God showed up. And the Bible says the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, a wise man, an intelligent man, a diligent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul. I told you he was smart. He would a sorcerer, but he said, it's something better than this. He called for the men of God. He called any time a sinner is calling for a saint like Cornelius. God's about to meet them. And so anything that gets in the way is about to meet the hand of God. Ah, Jesus. He desired, listen here, he desired the sin of man is hungry. You know this false prophet. You know this false prophet is teaching something, but this man that's hungry, he's, mm, 
light at your table. It ain't right. It, man, something ain't right here. I'm going to hear these men that's got the word of the living God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. I came to tell you there are sorcerers and sorcery in the church. And many have not detected it yet. We got wizards, witches, and warlocks standing in the pulpit. Hallelujah. Casting spells on folks every Sunday morning. We got familiar spirits and demons of divination holding prayer lines and prophesying by evil spirits because saints want to know something so bad but not bad enough to seek God. Not bad enough to lay hold to God. Y'all may not remember three years ago they had us praying for somebody. They were so sick the doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with them because their children took them to a witch trying to get her delivered and she wind up with stage four cancer. I came to tell you it's a setup but I came to tell you the devil is about to get upset because you and I are about to walk out under the hand of God and the power of God is about to break the powers of darkness. The power of God is about to overthrow the kingdom of darkness. I came to tell you they're coming to the in the household of faith you're going to invite a guest speaker in your church oh he's just another preacher surprise the hand of God is on that one the power of the Lord is upon that one I came to tell y'all today let me read and the Bible says mm, now listen here he tried to withstand the sin seeking to turn away the jeopardy from the faith the devil tried to cut you off before you hear the word of God Oh, Lord, have mercy. But then Saul, notice it said, then, when the devil made that attempt, then Saul, who also is called Paul, what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. How I many know he didn't just get filled right then? Paul having already been filled with the Holy Ghost. How I many know you feel with the Holy Ghost? But then sometimes when a demon rises up, you feel that Holy Ghost rise up in you like mercury in a thermometer. It was in there, but it's like water in a pot. It go to boiling. All of a sudden, that anointing came on Paul. Because see, that demon rose rose up in that man and the Holy Ghost said no you ain't not in my face he rose up and then watch this Paul set his eyes on him see some of y'all be preaching looking at the wall looking at the floor but when that Holy Ghost come on you get you get eyeball to eyeball bold come on here you get stare you down bold let the devil know boo devil I got the Holy Ghost you don't scare me I ain't backing up cause you sitting out there looking like Godzilla's cousin I cast you and Godzilla out come on here that's what David did when he saw Goliath Everybody else was hiding. David said, yo, go lie. Let me give you a tip. Go lie down because I'm about to knock you down. Come on here. And I came to tell y'all. David knocked him out. But I came to tell you, the Bible says Saul set his eyes on him. And then he spoke a word. He said, oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief. Look at him. Now he tagged him. Down. Enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease to perform? Pervert the right way of the Lord. Did you catch that word pervert? This false prophet has been pushed in the right way. And we got a lot of false prophets in the pulpit. They don't ever call you out, but they twist in the word. I call them pulpit pimps. But I came to tell you there's coming a, a showdown. We ain't going to be on Mount Carmel either. But I came to tell you, Micaiah is about to stand up. Elijah is about to stand up. And the fire God is about to come down because God's about to move. Move his mighty hand. I sell a lot of shine. Watch this now. Uh, and now when? Now when? Now when? Now. It's showdown time and devil I ain't got to go pray three days. I ain't got to say to meet me next week. Right now. What's going to happen? The who? The what? The hand of God. God. See, here's a man living under the influence of the hand of God. Here's a man living life under the hand of God. When you're under the hand of God, you, have you ever been with somebody, you know, like you got this little bully in town, he always want to show up, but then you walk in with daddy one day and he show up and you say, daddy, that's the bully right there. How do you do? When you speak to him, how you doing? <laughs> ain't seen you in a while. No, no, you're you, you always cussing me out. Now you grinning. What's up? You under a hand. Come on here. You under a big old hand. And he know I I've been I mess with you 
right now. I came to tell you that's what God's about to do. He said manifested power. God's about to be seen with you. God ain't shame of you. God's about to let folk know I'm with you. He's about to show himself strong on your behalf. Ah, look at here now. The hand of the Lord, not will be, but what? It's on you now. As soon as I speak, abracadabra, come on here. I speak and I create. I speak and it happens. Soon as I speak, whoop, that is. He said, the hand of God is on you now, and thou shalt be blind. When? Now. Not seeing the sun for a season starting right now. And when did it happen? Immediately, what? There fell on him a mist and a darkness. It wasn't no sickness. wasn't no disease. This wasn't no freak accident. His sugar didn't go up to 1100. No, no. God dropped a mist on him. God dropped a darkness on him. And the booger can't see nothing. Can't see his hand in front of his face. And now he, he go to reaching for somebody. Trying to yeah, help me get up out of here. See, Paul know about that on Damascus Road when he was Mr. Big Stuff. God said, who you think you are? You persecuting me? He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutors thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? He learned real quick that whoever you are, you the boss. <laughs> who who art thou, Lord? Hallelujah. Paul was blind for three days. And when a man prayed for him, what happened? Scales fell off. God didn't put his eyes out. He just dropped something on him where he couldn't see through him. I came to tell you, God's about to show himself strong if you will just live under his hand. That means you got to walk in the fear of God every day. It ain't your way, it's God's way. Don't feel like you just got dogged out. Uh -uh, just let God be God. I ain't, you know, they ain't gonna punk me out. No, 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 no. Meekness ain't weakness. You submitting yourself to the spirit of the living God and then you just going to stand still and see the salvation of your God. You just going to watch God move for you. And you ain't going to never take your hands out your pocket unless you just want to throw them up to give him a praise. Uh -huh. And the Bible said, then the deputy when he saw what was done? See, the unbeliever got to see something in this hour. It's everybody debating, but who demonstrating? Like I told you about the little woman in Haiti. The witch doctor came up there and laid down on his back with shaking his little bag of bones and chanting and started levitating. And his little henchman ran a hula hoop over his body and said, can your God do this? Can your God make you levitate? She said, no, sir. My God didn't give me power to levitate. I can't lay on the ground and make my body rise, but I got power to bring heels down. I got power over all all the power of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ and now that I command you to come down bam he hit the ground looked bewildered jumped up and ran off revive or broke out and hated why because somebody under the hand of God see God did not give us the spirit of fear he gave us power love and a sound mind and I came to tell you here tonight with things that's going on stop watching CNN stop watching Fox stop watching all these bad pronosticators and begin to get in your prayer closet and listen to Jesus and walk out hallelujah ignorant of what they talking about but not ignorant of the devil's devices intelligent under the hand of God and God's about to show himself strong let's move on to my next point the hand of God will bring provision folk talking about the supply chain look like it's getting cut off I do not expect to be affected by that come on now how you gonna say you don't expect to be affected when the supply chain run down it messed up everybody come here Elijah I need you to testify these folk ain't read your story. They don't know about you at the Brook Zarephat doing the three and a half year famine. Can you testify for me tonight? Well, Prophet Ford, I believe I will. I came to tell y'all, hallelujah, that I went to the king and said, thus saith the Lord, there shall be no rain to do these three years until I say so. He said, I walked off with the keys of heaven in my back pocket. I sat down by the brook and twice a day ravens showed up. They bought me bread and flesh. I came to tell you the same God that provided for Elijah he will provide for you if my God can supply 4,500 tons of manna every morning for 40 years if my God can supply 11 million gallons of water every day in a desert for 40 years don't you sit there and tell me hallelujah he can't feed you and your family 
But let's go to numbers. Let's go to numbers. Let's go to numbers. Let's go to numbers. Somebody do the math. If you got 600,000 footmen, and then you got, if each one of them just married, amen, that's 1.2 million, right? Then if each one of them, amen, has got one child, which we know is impossible, you know, 600,000 folks and no one child. So if we just give them two children apiece, we already at 2.4 million. So I came to tell you, if you look at Hebrew history, they didn't have no one or two kids. You just read genealogy. You don't see no he begat and then begat and quit. No, no, he begat and begat and begat. Enoch lived. Okay, y'all got it. So I came to tell you if we just give them a family of four, we already at 3.5 million just on a small calculation. So the Bible says in Numbers 11 that all, I mean, all of a sudden the crowd was getting big. Jethro gave Moses some wisdom. He said, Moses, you're going to wear yourself out and wear the people out. You need some help. So Moses went to God. Let's pick it up in verse 17. And the Lord began to talk to Moses and said, I'm going to do, I'm going to come down and talk with thee there. And I'm going to take of the spirit. I'm going to take of the anointing which is up on thee. And I'm going to put it up on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. That thou bear it not thyself. It's good when people got the same anointing on them that you got. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourself. See, that's what folk don't want to do. Against tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh. And watch this. You're going to do what? They've been eating manna, but they said, no, we, we, we tired of these biscuits. Mm, we don't want no more biscuits and gravy. We want a sand, no, a sandwich. That's how y'all say. We need a sandwich. Come on here. Uh, and the Bible says, for you have wept in the ears of the Lord. You ain't just been crying in Moses' ears. God said, you've been crying in my ears, saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. What they said is, it was better for us being a slave in Egypt than out here in this wilderness ain't getting nothing but bread. Huh? Therefore, the Lord, because that the dog of what? He gonna give you flesh and you gonna eat it. Cause you're crying, cause you're whining. You ain't praising, you complaining. And you shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days. Look at God. God said, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna let you know I ain't a, but even what? A whole month until it come out your nose. I'm gonna stuff you. You talking about I can't provide you. You trying to sell me short? I'm gonna stop you till you're going to get sick of me. And Moses said, watch this now. Mm, I love it. Because you have, have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? Why did we get free? We should have stayed bound, and the devil is a lie. That's how folk testify now. But their eyes light up. When I was out there in pimping and drugs, but now I'm with Jesus. Man, when I was in the streets, I was big balling and shot calling, but now I got saved. You know, when I was out there in the streets, I had a car so long it took five minutes to turn the corner, but now I got a little you go. The devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I love it, I love it, I love it. He said, and Moses said, Y'all should eat flesh. And that may eat a whole month. Now, now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. I like this, verse 21. Moses said to the people among whom, he said, he's talking to God. He said, the people among whom I am are what? 600,000 footmen. That's why I had to do the math earlier. Now, this is Moses talking to God. And thou hast said, I'm going to give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. He's like, God, that's too hard for you. Lord, you know where we at? You, you told us we can't eat these cows. You said that's for a sacrifice to you. See, that's what some of y'all can't handle. You got money in your pocket that ain't yours. Tie, and you, you want to do something with it. You want to do something with it. Well, God said, nothing. Moses, so Moses said, what, the Lord, what you going to do? You going to take the tithes and offerings? How are we going to eat flesh for a month? We out here in the, in the desert. And we don't know what we're going to do. See, you done counted God out. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them? Shall we use the tithes and offerings for them to suffice them? How many, some of folk tried that. It didn't work out too good, did it? Watch, watch this, watch this. Or oh, shall how many? All the fish of the sea. Now, wait a minute, Moses. You ain't got that many people. Be gathered together for them to suffice them. And the Lord said to Moses, is the Lord's hand waxed short? No, no, no. He don't even say, is my hand waxed short? He said, Moses, 
You talking to Yod Hey Vav Hey Moses? Moses, you talking to El Shaddai? Moses, you talking to El Elyon? Moses, you 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 talking to Jehovah, the self-existing God who created everything you see? You saying my hand short? My hand been quacked out? My hand been harvested? I don't have no hand. My hand been bought down? My hand been withered up? My hand been drawn up? Is my hand waxed short? That is, and instead I shall see. Oh, I'm gonna show you something. He said, you think my hand short? You will see now whether my word shall come to pass under thee or not. Look at God. He said, oh, you want to try me? You want to call me out? You want to tell me you got something I can't do? All right, Moses. If, if the street boy said, bet. Verse 31, verse 31, verse 31, verse 31. And there went forth a what? A wind from who? God said, now I left out something in there that you, you know, but he said, okay, I'm going to show you my word going to come to pass. And God said, I'm just going to send a wind. He ain't send no hurricane. Watch this. That went forth a what? A wind from, notice all capital letters again, from the Lord, from Jehovah, from Yahweh, from yod heh vav -Hey, and brought what? Quails from the sea and let them what? Fall by the camp. How many know they didn't fall alive? Let them fall dead. Boom. You got your quail there. I bought them to you. You ain't got to go fight. You don't, need no, you don't need no quail dog. You don't need no gun. Just go pick them up. But, but, but remember what he said. 30 days. A whole month, right? <laughs> Lord, watch this. Watch. This. I mean, this is crazy right here. As it were a day's journey on this side, how far can you walk in one day? And as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, he encompassed the camp with it. As it were two cubits. A cubit is 18 inches high up on the face of the earth. That's three feet of meat. Three feet of meat a day's journey this way. <laughs> three feet of meat. And most of the time, how many people he got? Now, mathematicians said that's 3.5 million quails a month. I mean, 500 million quails a month because it's 3.5 million people. 500 million quails a month because it's, it, it's, it's a daily push. But watch this, watch this. God said, three feet of quails, two days journey. Either way you go. A day journey, where you go. And the people stood up what? All that day and all that night. So wait a minute. 24 hours in a day. And 12 hours. That's 36 hours. If God gave you a harvest, it took you 36 hours just to get, you ain't counting. You're just trying to get it in. Watch this. <laughs> and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. Numbers chapter, uh, Nehemiah chapter 2. I'm just trying to tell you, God is a provider, baby. Now, I know we know about Abraham up on the mountain, and he said there was a ram in the bush, and he called that place Jehovah Uri. We call it Jehovah Jireh. God sees and provides. We just say that. We ain't convinced he can provide for me. How do you know? Because every time things get tight, don't know what I'm going to do. My wife was just talking about it. If you want to give a thousand, tell him I want to give a thousand. And I came to tell you he'll provide the thousand. What? He ministers seed to who? The sower. He ain't going to give you a thousand to sow. If you a sower, he'll get the thousand to you because he know he can get it through you. But anytime God tell you to sow a thousand, it's because he wants to give you a hundred thousand, but you can't see it like that. Uh -huh. Nehemiah, y'all there? Nehemiah 2, verse 1. And the Bible says, and it came to pass, remember I said that God will bring provision, amen, for a, a task that he give you, for, for an assignment that he's given you. And it came to pass in the month Nisan. You know, Nisan is the beginning of the year. Now, I know, see, we got folk now at the point where such, such deep prophecy teachers, and they always tell us September is the beginning of the year. Why don't you read your Bible? Jesus told them through the prophet Moses, when they were in Exodus chapter 12, went to Passover, this shall be the beginning of of the year for you. When is Passover? It's in March, April. So March, April is the beginning of the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew year from the Bible. Now you got all these scholars that come up with all this stuff, these deep folks. Just read your Bible. I ain't deep. I ain't deep, but I can read. 
shall come to pass in the month Nisan in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king that wine was bought before him. Nehemiah's a cup bread. That's why he's talking about wine. And I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not before time been sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said to me, why is thy countenance sad seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. When then was I very sore afraid and said to the king let the king live forever why should not my countenance be sad now look here he's, he's a little bit nervous here but he's talking about his assignment when the city of the place of my father's sepulchre lies waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire see I didn't read the other chapter the first chapter when they came and told him that and he started fasting and praying does anything ever hit your spirit and cause you to go consecrate yourself to find out what can I do to fix this see that's that's a, that's, a, that's a hint to what your assignment is. What grieves you the most? What angers you the most? What makes you want to pour some money into it? What makes you want to volunteer as part of your assignment? What makes you want to say, that ain't right. I'm going to go fix that at my own expense. The king said unto him, watch this, the king said to me, for what doest thou make request? You feel it like this? Ask for some. My wife just told you two tries on that. How many know the king can tote the note? <laughs> this guy used to be with me in the financial service business, bro. And he he he, he booked him a, a nice uh, vacation up at the resort, the resort where they, you know, the ski resort, snowing and everything. And he told a lady, he said, Now I need three weeks. He said, I want the uh, the first week. I'm going to need, and he had a, a whole block of room because he took his grandkids and his children up there. He said, then the next week, I'm going to need this block because I got some friends coming. And then the next week, me and mama just going to hang out and rest after we get through entertaining. And she tried to give him a three-star hotel. And she called him back with a real good deal. He said, ma'am, I told you I want a five-star hotel. I'm paying for this. You the agent. Just book me a five-star hotel like I told you. This is what I want. And I'm sitting in his office. When he got through, he smiled. He said, Papa can tote the note. Well, I came to tell y'all, Papa can tote the note. Uh-huh. God, if he told you to do it, he's a first-class God, and Papa can tote the note. So you ain't got to be looking at cute class up in the book of reservation. How much is that back seat of the plane back there? You, oh, you don't like the front seat? You want to... You, Y'all ain't gonna get me distracted. Y'all ain't gonna distract me. The king said, what you want? Request it. So I prayed to the God of it. See, don't be stupid. Don't get flippant. Don't get in the corner of mind. He said, I got a job to do for God. Let me ask God, because I ain't been down there to see this. I don't really know how much it's going to take. You know, before you do a job, you got to be at the job. Come on here. He said, so since I can't get there and put my hands on it, let me talk to the God that's already there looking at it. And then God told him what it's going to take to do this thing. And I said to the king, if it please the king, if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou would have sent unto send, send me, send me, not release me and allow me to go, send me king, I want you to bankroll my trip send me, come on now, send me to Judah unto the city of my father sepulchre that I may build it and the king said unto me, the queen sitting by his side, I like that ah, now you ain't got to go home and say well I know what I said but when I talked to the queen last night, she said we can't do that we can only do this, no 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 mm -hmm. yeah, see I had, a, I had a queen talking to me without her king and she was going to give me $4,000. And she talked to the king. He said, send him $1,500. So when they together, come on here, you get the right, you get that answer one time, you're good. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So he said, the queen, right by his side. But how long shall thy journey be? And when will thou return? So it pleased the king to do what? To send me. And then I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. Moreover, now, oh, look, I'm on a roll now. So, you know, I ain't, look, he was so afraid. Don't sound like he's scared now, do it. No, because he done found favor. Now his favor working now. See, some of y'all afraid to follow your favor. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to me to the governors beyond the river, watch this, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. In other words, I'm getting ready to ask for a whole lot of material to build this thing. And I know there's cutthroats and robbers out there. So king, now you're sending me, but send a posse with me. 
I need your minister of defense to come go along with me. Mm-hmm. And a letter, oh, now I got to get my stuff too. And I need a letter under Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beam for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to what? The good hand of my God upon me. He living under the influence of God. God telling him how to talk to the king. Some of us ain't never talked to a king. I told y'all when I met the prince, the prince, come on here. But when God's hand is upon you, you at home in the palace, baby. You right there with the prince and you don't feel like, I don't want to mess up. Uh, if I might get the wrong fork, I, I, I'm, no, 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 ain't none of that, ain't none of that, ain't none of that. Because you got the hand of God on you and they know where he ain't been. He knew how to fit in every environment. Uh-huh. Now, let, let's move to Isaiah 50. I'm going to talk about the hand that God will deliver you. See, I'm talking about living up under the hand of God. When you live under something, you, you, you know, like when you're under your roof, you're always conscious that it's over you. So when we get conscious of the presence of God, walking in the fear of God, living life to please him, just walking at the rhythm of God, walking through life at the rhythm of God. Isaiah 50 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 50, verse 2. The Bible says, worth for when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Watch God. Is my hand shortened at all? God says, my hand drew back a little bit. It, it, come on, is it, it drew up at all? That it, that it cannot redeem or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. <laughs> I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and they die for thirst. Redeem is the Hebrew word peduth. It's spelled P-E-D-U-W-T-H but it's pronounced P-E-D-O-O-T-H. It talks about distinction. It talks about redeem. Now redeem here means distinction, deliverance, division. Can I not separate between my kids and the devil's kids? Can I not bring redemption? Can I not proceed? Anything ever paralyze you? You can't go no further. God says my hand too short. We can't keep going because it's a pandemic. We can't keep going because they say it's a recession. When they had the recession a few years ago, my wife stood right here and said, I'm not participating. I refuse to participate. Now, folks, are, how you going to say that it's a recession in the whole country? How you ain't going to participate? Can I tell y'all something? She ain't participate. She had like it wasn't no recession. She didn't even take a recess. She just kept right on doing what she was doing. Now, I'm trying to tell y'all, you got to understand, you don't just jump into everything the devil throw at you. Watch this. He said, can I? He, God said, you trying to tell me I can't anticipate? I can't anticipate what's going to happen for I am Jehovah Uri. I do see what's coming and provide for it. You trying to say my hand too short for me to anticipate a thing before it get here and how you prepare it when it get here? Uh-huh. Redeem. I'm talking about redeem now. It means to hasten. Hasten means to watch over and to watch for. God said, you telling me now my hand's so short I can't watch over and watch for what's coming? You saying I can't meet this thing and to, to help and to prevent it? God said, you telling me my hand too short to stop the devil? You ever had a situation where maybe you was with a loved one, a child or something, and somebody rolled up and you behind them and you put your hand in the back them up and you put the child behind you and say like, oh, you want to talk? <laughs> well, not really. Oh, no, God said, you telling me I can't get in front of you? I can't go before you? You telling me I can't confront what's facing you? I'm, I ain't God enough. You got to go get somebody else to do this. How many of us don't go to God first? He said, my hand show that I have no power. Power is the Hebrew word koak. It means strength, power, might. Watch this. Capacity means produce, ability, force, fruits, strength, substance, wealth. The basic meaning of co-op is the ability to do something. God said, you telling me my hand's short and I ain't got the ability to do what you need done and I told you to do it? God can't bankroll his own project? I don't have no power to deliver, no sell. N-A-T-S-A-L. It's a primitive root. It means I can't snatch you up out of that. It said it was snatch away. It literally means to 
defend. God said, you telling me I can't, my hand too short, I can't defend you. I can't deliver you. I can't give you a way of escape without fail. I can't pluck you out. I can't preserve you in it. How many know some things God will take you out of? Some things he'll preserve you in it. Y'all know the Hebrew boys got in that furnace. That furnace. Y'all know that furnace was hot. The men that threw them in there burnt up. It was seven times hotter than it's ever been. So nobody knew how hot that was. Nobody knew the effects of that heat. And his strongest men threw them in bound and nothing burned but the chain. Nothing burned but the rope. Nothing burned. Come on here. They clothes didn't burn. They hair didn't smell like smoke. But you got to understand something. That's because before they went in, they said, King, let us tell you something. Whether God, whether you put us in the fire or not. Now see, more people say whether he deliver us or not. He said, no, 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 no. King, if you put us in there, we're not going to bow. We're not going to burn. If you don't put us in there, we're not going to bow. So King, whether it be so, let me just tell you this. If you put me in that fire, I'm not burning up. If you don't put me in the fire, I'm not bowing. I ain't compromising. And the king got mad and threw him in there. And then the king said, well, hey, didn't we put three men in there? When they bound? King, we bound them tight. He said, I see four. And they loose. And one of them looked like the son of God. This is a pagan. How do you know what the son of God looked like? That probably was the biggest angel he ever saw. He said, the biggest, that, that got to be God's boy to be that big. No, no, no. What happened? They said, King, if it be so, meaning if you put us in there, we're not going to burn. But if not, if you don't put us in there, we ain't burn. I know your preacher told you whether he delivers us or not, he's still able to. Go back and read it for yourself. Stop reading into the Bible what somebody said and read what the Bible said. That king said, I'll make another decree. Anybody serve any God other than the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will burn his house up. What happened? Isaiah 59. He made, the, he made a believer because they stood under the mighty hand of God in the face of opposition. See, you got to understand, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't chiding with no other prophet. It's talking about all what's coming. I'm just trying to tell you in the midst of it, God with you. Didn't he say, I never leave you nor forsake you? That's why I'm trying to tell you, preach God, man. You, 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 oh, well, y'all better get ready. You better go buy you some jerky. I ain't buying no jerky. They had to go buy you some jerky and some powdered eggs and powdered milk. And man, I remember when I stayed with my grandma, they had so much stuff, 55 pounds of this, 55 pounds bags of that. And you go back to get some of that stuff in here. They, I don't know what a change is. They said it got changes in there. Come on, got, got little bugs running around in there. Had it stored so long. Come on now. Now just bleed God and show up fresh. God, God, I ain't talking about being flippant. We're talking about living under the influence of God. God will tell you what to do. God will let you know when you need to have a supply, when you need to have surplus. But you got to understand, don't be doing stuff out of fear. That folks in 1988 bought so much water and went and sold everything and went out there in the hills and Jesus ain't got here yet. Isaiah 59. Behold, the, hand, the Lord's hand is not short. What? At all that he cannot say, Yasha, Yashu. This is to open wide that he cannot free, that he cannot free or secure, that he cannot avenge, defend, deliver, be the deliverer, that he cannot save, he cannot help, pres preserve, rescue, make safe, bring salvation, bring a savior. His hand too short to get victory. Is his hand too short to save you, to, to, to be liberating you? Is his hand too short to save you in battle? Is his hand too short for you to be victorious, to save from all troubles, or to give victory to you? Isaiah 53. God just God is checking. My arm feel like it's the same. Is my arm short? I, I, I ain't know it's wrong. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who hath believed our report. And to whom is the what? Oh, he went from the hand to the whole arm now. The arm of the Lord revealed. How many know a strong hand on a weak arm ain't going to do much? Come on here. So God is saying my strength, arm still, still my strength, power, arm puts the whole shoulder in it. It's kind of like when you boxing, you know, you, you, people think you just throw bolo punch. No, when you box, amen, you, you, uh, when you understand the technique of boxing, when you punch, you turn 
everything. Your whole every every when you when you throw a punch, it ain't just a punch, it's a punch. Your shoulder, everything is in it. So that's what God said. Now I'm finna reach out with my whole hand. I'm bringing the whole arm against your enemy. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in, in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 34. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 34, the book of promises. And I want you to know, hallelujah, that God is a mighty God. The book of Deuteronomy 4:34 says, Or hath God a say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war. Oh, God is a battle axe now. And by a what? A mighty hand, and by what? A stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. God said, I'm going to let you see me fight. I'm going to let you see me go to battle for you. He said, you just stand still and watch Papa handle business. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm just trying to tell you, God is our deliverer. And we're in a time now, yes, things are going on. Yes, things are being procrastinated, uh, prognosticated. Yes, people are trying to bring us into bondage. Yes, there's an ulterior motive. Yes, they are trying to sabotage this nation. Yes, they are trying to overthrow this country. But there's a people of God if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray if they'll just seek my face if they'll turn from their wicked ways then I'm going to hear from heaven and I'm going to heal their lamb I came to tell you it don't matter how many compromise it don't matter what rises up my Bible still tells me a thousand shall fall at my side ten thousand at my right hand but it shall not come nigh me if I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. If I abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I came to tell y'all, if the Lord is your habitation, if God is your dwelling place, if you look your eyes to the Lord, he's a shade upon your right hand. The sun ain't gonna smite you by day. The moon can't smite you by night. God is the strength of your life. Of whom shall you be afraid? When your enemies come upon you to heat up your flesh, they stumble and fall. Well, I can to tell you tonight, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, for God is with you. His rod and his staff, they're going to comfort you. They're going to revive you. They're going to resuscitate you. Oh, I know it. Friends have died. Loved ones have died. Mothers have died. Fathers have died. Brothers have died. Sisters, uncles, aunts, nieces his grandmas have all died because COVID has been taking folks out but I came to tell you there's a people that's kept by the power of God through faith under salvation the same COVID that killed that one couldn't take you out you had it and it had to move on why because God is your deliverer God is greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. I came to tell y'all, live under the influence of God. My last scripture, Deuteronomy 5 and verse 15. I living under the mighty hand of God. You living in a bubble. No, I'm not. I'm living in the presence of God. Walking in the fear of God. God told me back in 1984, there's a change taking place in the land. God told me in 1984, something is coming up on the land and God's about to remove his hand. God told me in 1984 to go on the sin of man that the whole world is sinking sin. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. I came to tell y'all something is coming up on the land but God is about to reveal his hand. I let the devil know I'm going to be the one that stands. Mm, we hear now, verse 15, and the Bible says, and remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy 
God brought thee out this through a mighty hand and what? A stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded to keep the Sabbath day. Can we just obey God? Can we just do what he's saying? Do you understand? We don't keep the Sabbath day no more. We do what we want to do every day. Run ourselves tired. God just told you to rest. He told you to give yourself a break, but no, you can't rest. You'd rather work tired. You'd rather drive, fight, and sleep. You'd rather bat your eyes on the way to the next place you got to go. And then, holler when you get to work, well, Lord, give me strength. He said, give you strength if you'd have laid down and rested for eight hours. You'd have had some strength. But I came to tell you, can't just do the simple things and put yourself under the hand of God. Because we're in a time now when the God that you serve is looking for those that serve him. The God that you're crying out to is looking for those that will walk with him and talk with him and walk through life at the rhythm of God. God wants a people that ain't just hype and psych. He wants a people that believe God, a people that trust God, a people that live for God. Why should I be bound when Jesus set me free? I came to tell you we are the redeemed. You have been delivered. And let the devil know I ain't bound by the flesh. I ain't bound by the carnal man. I'm not going to be bound by nothing. Why? Because Jesus whosoever the son sets free is what he's free indeed come on lift your hands and give him praise and glory Rabbi Shiata. oh God breathe on those that are watching by Facebook breathe on those that are viewing God the DVD the telecast touch right now by the power of your hand God let your mighty hand rest upon the people let them feel your hand calling them to come out from among them and be separate saith the Lord call the people to sanctify themselves to come and get some time alone with God alone some people that are crucified mortify and subdue their flesh and put that flesh under subjection put it back on the altar go back on a real fast real praying speaking to the powers of darkness breaking assignments over their lives father in the name of Jesus breathe on the people that's hungry breathe on the people that ain't gonna just talk about it for two days and then go back when they feel better but God raise up a people that's hungry for you raise up a people that want to know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent father give us a people that will come back to the altars and cry mighty to God Lord give us a people that will not satisfy the flesh we are not debtors to the flesh we owe the flesh nothing cause us to be a people that's hungry and thirsty after righteousness Lord show us your glory take us no further except you go with us Lord you said draw not to you and you are drawn out to us help us tonight God to draw out to you help us tonight God to seek you with our whole heart almighty God of heaven help us to not be satisfied with the status quo help us to stop satisfying ourselves because we think we are cut above the brother next to us help us see there's so much more than new regions new plains new places new endeavors new adventures in the realm of the spirit another level of grace another level of peace another level of power there's more Lord I feel like Joshua I'm 64 but there's yet much work to be done God give us grace to finish the work give us grace to finish our course give us grace in this hour Lord to seek your face you said no man stir it up himself to seek after you creating us a hunger for you cause us to thirst for thee as the deer panted for the water brooks cause us to pant after you that we might know thee I don't know shot Ah, the only true God and Jesus, the only Messiah, grant unto us fresh the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Help us, God, to turn our beds into altars again. Help us not to be satisfied with a morning devotion. David said three times a day, do I cry out to you seven times a day? 
do I praise thee. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, create in us a hunger for God, a hunger for your word. Help us, Lord, to fast and pray again, to cry mighty unto God. Save our city, save our nation, save our families, save our children. Deliver by thy hand, deliver by thy power, deliver by thy glory. Show yourself strong, stretch out your hand, stretch out your mighty arm, touch America, touch Little Rock, oh God, touch Tennessee, touch Erie, Pennsylvania, touch Dallas, Fort Worth, touch this city, touch New Orleans, Louisiana. Lord, stretch out your hand in Streetport and Bossier City. Stretch out your hand in Bidden and Searcy. Stretch out your hand in Ball Knob. Stretch out your hand in Macquarie. Stretch out your hand in Jonesboro. Let your hand fall in Riceville. Let your hand fall in Pine Bluff. Let your hand fall in Hamburg. Let your hand fall in Crossing in Monroe, Louisiana. Lord, in the name of Jesus, move by your spirit. Move by your power. Create in us a hunger for God that we are not moved by men. Help us to be like the apostles in the book of Acts. Lord, whether we should obey man or God, let them worry about it. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve you. As for me, I choose to obey you in spite of, in the face of, regardless of. Give me strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Cause the people to turn their face to the wall and cry, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember how I used to fast and pray. Remember how I live holy every day. I bind the spirit of pity and grief. I curse every pity party. In the name of Jesus, I bind every excuse. Lord, help us. Oh, Jesus, help us in this hour, Lord, to grab a hold to the horns of the altars. Help us, Lord, to cry mighty. Those that are watching by Facebook right now, let them get on their face and cry out to you. Those that are watching the telecast, those that are watching the DVD, Lord, let a spirit of prayer fall in their homes. Let a spirit of grace and supplications get got to pull over to the side of the road. Lord, in the name of Jesus, they got to throw their hands up and cry mighty to God. Lord, loose an anointing to fast and pray. Loose an anointing to make television detestable because we're so hungry for God. Lord, help us to seek your face to cry mightily unto you. Help us in this hour, Lord, to only be content with your presence. I feel like Moses if your brothers ain't going don't take me up show us your glory 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 let it break out to the left and to the right move for us move in us move on us move through us bring us back to the altars. Bring us back to the bleeding side of Calvary. Help us, Lord. Create a hunger in your people. Let grace and supplication fall. Lord, this last month of the year, help us to pray, read, fast, and obey like never before. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus.
God, give us an old-fashioned book of Acts power pack, Holy Ghost revival in this hour. Lord, we need an outpouring. God, we got to have a move of God. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons again, open the blind eyes, unstop the deaf ears, heal the heart, the lame, and the man, give us miracle signs and wonders, restore the gifts of the spirit, restore the working of miracles, restore the gifts of healings, restore the gift of faith, restore the gifts of prophecy, words of knowledge, tongues and interpretation of tongues, Lord, restore the hunger to the church, so we stop giving you a 90 minute service on Sunday morning, help us to give you time to visit, give you time to make impartations, give you time to move, help us to get away from one day meetings, and have revivals, and let the spirit of God move, Lord in Jesus name, help us to give your house back to you, help us to turn the church back over to the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus move on leadership, move on the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists move God I rebuke the spirit of compromise in the church, help us to get this sin out of the house of God help us God to go in the camp and bring the Achans out help us almighty God to purge the house of God purge the people cleanse us by the washing of the water of the word cleanse us Lord by the blood of Jesus I plead the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood of Jesus over the church I plead the blood over the people of God I plead your blood I decree your blood prevails I plead your blood against wizardry witchcraft Satanism soothsaying necromancy familiar spirits and demons of divinations I break your powers I command you to bow your knee I command you to come down loose the body of Christ come out the house of God loose the men and women of God in the name of Jesus I bind you spirit of apathy you demon of lethargy in the name of Jesus I curse the spirit of schism and division in the name of Jesus I give you glory and honor tonight God I thank you for diligence I thank you for hunger I thank you for spiritual your accuracy. I thank you for a man to glorify God and edify the people of God. Raise us up in this hour. Raise up a people in this hour, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. God baptize them in the Holy Ghost. Lord, baptize them in the Holy Ghost while they're watching on Facebook. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost while they're watching the telecast. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost while they're watching on YouTube. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost while they're watching the DVD. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God fall. Let the Holy Ghost fall. Let them find themselves talking in a language they ain't never learned. By the power of God, Lord, we need the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, breathe on the people. Breathe on the people. Breathe on the people. Breathe on the people. Deliver them from Netflix. Deliver them from HBO. Deliver them from BET. Deliver them almighty God from Snapchat. Lord, deliver them from Google Hangout. Deliver them from TikTok. Lord, in the name of Jesus, deliver your people from social media. Let them get back in the presence of God. Create a hunger for the written word. Let them pick up a real Bible again and begin to search the scriptures again seeking your faith with a whole heart creating us a clean heart renewing us the right spirit give us a renewed focus a renewed determination help us to cry mightily under you help us God to restore all night prayer meetings help us God to get up a great while before day and continue in prayer help us to continue all night in prayer talking to you Communing with you, not 
because the light bill is due, not because the child is rebellious, but that we may know you, that only true God help us to fellowship with you and know you intimately. Help us to walk at the rhythm of God in this hour. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us to reclaim our place. Help us to take our place in the family of the beloved. Open our eyes. Help us to see that we're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Give us afresh the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. 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 Strengthen us with might by your spirit in the inner man. Help us to sell out to you, Jesus, to live soul out to you, Lord. Help us, Jesus, to be holy because you holy. Help us, Lord, to perfect holiness in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and glory. Praise and glory. Been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send eight dollars for compact disc or twenty dollars for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, PO Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.